been when you first started helping out as a sound crew member at Gate? Bob was actually more of a designation than a name. It was used to describe any Malay guy who was a little on the plum side, dark skinned, and who was involved in audio engineering. Interestingly, if a Bob was more plump than usual, he would be called Bobo. <laughs> Bob first met Susanna during a concert for local ads at the outdoor theatre at the Esplanade. At the Esplanade. <laughs> she was the front woman for an all girl band called Fairy Dust Ball, which performed songs that were mainly ambient music, punctuated by minimal lyrics recited over and over again. Susanna had a breathy little girl voice, and when she stood on stage, assumed the vulnerable, not neat posture of the engineer. It was a particular form of showmanship, refusing to project oneself towards the audience, but instead drawing them in towards a private, pinprick space, the space of the turns, cryptic diary entry, or a hairline crack in the heart. In fact, for most of the songs, Susanna would avoid eye contact with the audience. Hers was a solipsistic but yet strangely magnetic performance, declaring to the audience the fact that she wanted to be understood as an enigma. During the post-show supper, Bob spotted Susanna sitting at a table just beside his. He, lay, he leaned over and said, I like what you guys did just now. It was refreshing. <laughs> Bob knew he was not entirely telling the truth. He had seen many acts like hers before, with the anxiety to claim indie cred and cleverly, cleverly disguised as nonchalance towards populist cred. And honestly, a couple of Susanna's songs deterred dangerously between whimsical and twee. Susanna smiled. She had a dimple only on her left cheek, and that kind of asymmetry gave her beauty a mysterious edge. Bob asked her who her favourite singers were. I kind of like Cat Power, she said. Five says all right. What about closer to home? Bob asked. Oh, I think Yuna's not bad. Uh, and CRV? They are bringing a different sound to the scene because they're not belters, not like Siti Nohaliza or Ningbai Zura and that Dayang, Dayang Nofaliza. Yeah, she's got that whole r &B thing going on. Yeah, Susanna said. I don't get why she's trying to sound so black. <laughs> but what about your favorite singers? Bob thought for a moment. He had already told one white lie. He decided that he should not inaugurate an acquaintance with Susanna with a whole series of them. Alexa like Saloma, he said. Saloma, you mean like Piramni's wife? Katina Dahari was once asked who her favorite singer was, and she said, Saloma. Katina who? Hey, how can you not know Katina Dahari? She's from Singapore also. You mean Saloma was from Singapore too? She grew up in Pasir Panjang. Actually, four of my favorite singers are all from Singapore. Saloma, Katina Dahari, Rafi Ambuang, and Sharifah Ali. And you know the interesting bit? Saloma is Malay, Katina is Javanese, Rafi A is Boyan, and Sharifah is Arab. And they all produce amazing Malay music. Wow, Susanna said. You listen to all those old songs? I was looking for songs about Singapore one day, and then I came across this song called Kronjong Singapura. It's also known as Singapura Waktu Malam by Saloma. You want to have a listen? Sure. Bob took out an MP3 player from his bag. He was always excited to share music with others because it allowed him to rediscover them anew through another person's ears. And then, of course, there was the image of uh, there was the image of them. Uh, with their ears linked by an earphone wire. Its dimensions would force them into a specific proximity with each other. Not too close such that their shoulders would touch, no, not yet at this point, but not too far to stretch the wire to a state of precarious tension. The song was played. Bob wondered whether Susanna was familiar with the Karoncho, that Indonesian musical style of consisting of intricate, interlocking melodies made by a flute, guitar, a pizzicato cello or string bass, and of course, the crocho itself, a ukulele-type instrument. The Portuguese were the ones who introduced that small guitar, adapted later by the Indonesians and also Hawaiians. And the sound it produced was a distinctively island sound. Combined with the flute, it evoked languor and listlessness, the strumming of coconut fronds by the sea breeze. 
Later on, Bob explained to Susanna how the Kurocho, for him, was the meeting point between two maritime peoples, the kinship between the Portuguese Sardé and the Malay Rindu, both worlds which express a longing inexpressible in other languages. And Singapore Waktu Malang, sung in 1962, was not just about a private yearning, but a political one, the wish to merge with the, Fed with the Federation of Malaysia. There were those lyrics, for example, Prosperous Singapore, peaceful and harmonious, becoming rich by the day as part of Malaysia. These days, the only songs with the word Singapore in the lyrics are National Day songs, Bob said. I like to listen to more of these songs, Susanna said. And so they exchanged numbers. Susanna insisted that Bob enter her name as Susie in his phone. Over the next couple of weeks, Bob would chat with her whenever he saw that she was online and send her his favorite songs. He sometimes wished that he was still living in the 50s, where music was not so easily digitized and transferable. He would have liked to pass her vinyl records instead, because that would have necessitated a meeting. One night, Bob decided that he would not lie to himself anymore. He was calling for Susanna, and so he sent her an SMS with the word Rindu. What? came the reply. I miss you. I wish we could see each other again. When I first saw you on stage that night, I knew you were the one for me. There was no reply from Susanna's side for a full five minutes, and then his hand would beat. Bob, I'm so sorry, but I don't even know your real name. You never asked me. I think that says it all, right? If I felt the same way about you, I would have asked right from the start. Bob switched off his handphone. At some point during the past two weeks, he had fantasized. Bob and Susie. Those would be that had names for each other. It was just like P. Ramli and Saloma calling each other Remy and Sammy. He would listen to Saloma again. That voice of hers, so light and clear, but not airy. The vowels causing each word to expand like blown glass, given shape and weight. It would be the perfect lullaby. All he wanted to do now was to fall asleep.